And a very good morning to you. It's Friday the 30th of August 2013. Chris Reardon with today's United Kingdom talk. The last one before I disappear to my short holiday, boys and girls. Oh yes, I shan't be here next Friday. I say it's the last one before my holiday, which actually starts next Friday. So I've still got another week here in the good old Summerfield, UK. I say summer field, not as in S-O-M-E, not as in a supermarket, no, as in summer field, F-I-L-L, -L. let me just turn my air thing on, oh where's that gone, just a minute, very hot now, very hot in here, there we are, oh yes we've got all the mod cons here dear, air conditioning, that without foul goes round wrong every two years. It cost me another 200 odd quid to fix, but there we are. Yes. Um, next Friday, off on my holiday to Rome. Quite looking forward to uh, going there. Few things planned out. We've found some vegetarian restaurants to try. I'm going with my best mate. We have people coming into our houses and looking after them rent free. I mean, I think, personally, I think, you know, if someone's going to live here for a few days, just under a week, we're about a week, just under a week, then they should be paying rent. What do you think? Or should I look at it like they're helping me out? I, I find it difficult to, to look at it that way, for some reason. But we'll be going to Rome, sort of, next Friday morning, around this time. We have the Vatican and the Sistine Chapel. I'm hoping, I hope I don't look up at the Sistine Chapel and notice a few areas that need a little bit of a touch-up. I may have to go in the Italian uh, equivalent of W.H. Smith's and possibly get a little paint pad. You know those painting sets that you can buy? Yeah, you know, you, you get like a tin and there's all these different coloured paints and pens and, and brushes and things like that. I could get one of those just in case the Sistine Chapel... Is it the Sistine Chapel? Is that the one with the pretty ceiling? As painted by... Who, who did that? Was it Christopher Wren? <laughs> I know nothing. And that's why I'm going. I'm going to find out, boys and girls. So won't be here next Friday. Sorry to disappoint you. What are you going to do with about that me here next Friday? Hmm? You're going to have nothing to do. There's lots on the show today, and we've got lots to get through in a very short space of time. Okay? Because... It's another foot day, yes, I've got to go down the hospital and have my feet looked at again a little bit later on. Do you know, I don't know if they're getting better or not, whether what they're doing is, is actually improving them or not. I mean, yesterday, uh, I had a car service yesterday at a Toyota. Always top marks for Toyota in Bracknell. Never had a problem with them. Very good. Treat me like a valued customer. Great service, nothing seems to go wrong. And so I had the car service. While they were doing it, so I went in. And I do like to have a little bit of a chat with the staff. Some are more chatty than others. And when I say I like to have a chat with the staff, it does seem to be me doing most of the talking and then doing the listening. And I always go to this, I like to talk to either Carl, he's the, ch he's the chat, looks after it, or, depends who's free, or there's another girl on the desk, uh, she's blonde, a little bit younger than me, probably about 45, 46, something like that. And I like to have her, she wears glasses, and I like her. And I chat to her. Sometimes I do see her, I think she might be a bit tired, because after a while of talking to her, I kind of see the eyelids start dropping down like that. And I was able to give her all my news... And I did, did my old chat bit, and I said, right, how long would it be? She said, oh, it's about an hour and a half today. I said, OK, I think I'll go for a walk. She said, why don't you go up the top there? I said, well, I've been up there. Last time I was here, I went to walk in the park. It's a beautiful park with fit, surrounded by fields, and, and I saw black sheep once in this field. Don't see many black sheep, do you? Are they really black, or do they dye their wool? Are there really black sheep around? Or does someone dye them black? Oh, I'm not sure about that. Anyway, so last time I went up there, saw Black Sheep, and there's a vet's up there. And it's a really nice park, beautiful park. Really nice, so that's up there. So I said, well, this time I think I'll go into town, because I needed to go to the bank. 
And instead of having the car service and then driving to the bank, I thought I'd walk into the bank. She said, oh, she said, it's, it's, um, it's that way. And you turn right. I said, I, I think I know the direction because that's the direction I drive home in. Oh, OK. She said, I might take you quite some time. I said, that's all right. I can walk. And the bloke next to me, he says, oh, well, it's three miles away. And I'm like, yeah. He said, well, it's a long way to walk. He said, you get your mobile phone with you? I said, yeah, well, he said, well, take, us, uh, take it with you. If you get stuck anywhere, just give us a ring and we'll come and pick you up, which I thought was quite nice. I said, well, it's only three miles. He said, well, three miles there and three miles back again. I said, yeah, six miles in, in a couple of hours. I mean, you don't, although the car service is going to take an hour and a half, you don't have to be there an hour and a half later. You know, you can leave it a bit. So I thought, oh, a couple of hours, nice walk. So off I set, you know, trundling along at my usual leisurely pace. No need to rush. There's no need to too much rushing around in this world. Except when I'm doing a show like this, OK? By the way, you might be with us live or you might be watching a recording. If you are with us live and you're not quite sure, you're not quite sure, are you? Are you watching a recording or is this live? OK. Have a look at the date. Is it August the 31st? Uh, sorry, is it August? Did I say the 31st? It's the 30th. Is it August the 30th, 2013? Is it coming up to 20 to 11 in the morning, UK time? If it is, then you are indeed with us live. How fantastic is that? And you can join in with us live at any point, either by email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, or we have Skype. My Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. You can either send a Skype message or do a Skype call and talk to us all live on the air. No doubt someone will ring in in a moment and play music down the phone, as they usually do. Let's have a little bit of music in the morning, just once I allow that. No more than once. Then I worked out, then, then I can work out. When, you, when it's the music you see coming, rather than a phone call. Or you can phone in. We have a local London number, 020 8133 6358. OK? 020 8133 6358. They are the methods of communication today. I shall just um, put the little text thing there as well. One second. Now, how do I do that? Oh, yeah. Enable text. There we are. Have you got a... A little thing there or not? No, that's not worked, is it, this time? Add effects. Enable. Yes, there we go. OK, so there's the uh, uh, phone number. And uh, you don't see that if you're watching the recording, OK, but the phone number and the um, uh, Skype username is both up on the screen now, uh, as you can see, if you're with us live. If you're with us uh, recording, you can't actually see that. Anyway, back to that. So I trundled along into town taking a, a, a nice leisurely place. I don't do leisurely places when I'm doing the show. Funny thing is, when I'm preparing for this show on Friday, right, I'm generally completely ready by about 10 o'clock for 10.30. OK? Got all my bits of paper. As you can see, there's quite a lot to get through today. All my bits of paper are here. Um, the systems are all fired up. The computers have started recording everything. The camera's in front of me. The microphones. The music's playing. Everything's ready at 10 o'clock and then I kind of sit here and start doing other things whether it's looking into my accounts um, doing a little bit of you know because I'm self-employed so you have to do all your own accounts and all that business checking emails Facebook messages putting things up telling people that the show's about to start and all this business firing up the Skype and I do things I look at the clock and it might be 10, 10 past 10 so I'll go and brush my teeth or I'll, I think I'll have another cup of tea you know, which I've got here. And then, then I might go and water the hanging baskets. Which, to be quite honest, are becoming a little bit of a pain. I'm getting fed up every morning, going up on a ladder and watering, watering the ha hanging. They're not too high. It's just like a step ladder. But nevertheless, you've got to drag it out of the kitchen, set it up, Climb up it, water the hanging baskets, come back down again, move it, water the next lot of hanging baskets. Do you know what I mean? Because they're quite high up. The reason they're high up is because once they were nicked. Now, 
It surprised me because that generally doesn't happen here in Bracknell in Royal Berkshire. We don't have hanging baskets nicked, but for some reason mine were. This did happen about 15 years ago, but I'm not taking another chance. All that hard work, all that hard work ruined by someone stealing my hanging baskets so they're high up now and you have to get a ladder out to water them. Then I might water my vegetable patch outside, which is doing very well. Then I come back upstairs and it might be 20 past. And then I'll realise some things I haven't done yet. And I start running around. And when you see me sit here at 10.30 on a Friday morning, okay, I have been running around for a few minutes. And I might have only been sitting here for about 30 seconds and I'm like, oh my God, you know, you know quickly do my hair, you know, check that my shirt's not too seductively. Oh, you don't want too many buttons open on the shirt. I mean, you really don't. People will be sitting in front of their computers looking at, you know, a little bit of bare naked flesh of mine and they might start, you know, do, well, you, you know, those, those people that watch those things on, 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 on videos, certain websites. I hope no one's doing that now. I really, oh, oh, what's made me feel quite ill that is. Please don't do things like that while, I'm, while you're watching me. Okay? Thank you. Trundle's into town, goes to the bank. I had to look at little, I, had to, I got the uh, travel agent. I had to look at the travel agent because I'm dealing with something else there at the moment, which I'll tell you about. Do it, of course, the show. And then walks back again. I walked in and um, the bloke looked up. It was about up past, up past 12 now, quarter to one. Oh, you made it back then? Well, of course I made it back. He says, it's a long walk, isn't it? I said, well, it's all right. You know, it's only six miles, about three miles there, three miles back. I said, no one wants to walk anywhere, do they? Jump in the car. My best mate's like that. He's already told me that if we want to go anywhere in Rome, we'll have to get a cab. Why can't we bloody well walk? Honestly, people are so lazy. I like to walk. It's all part of the fun. Although I have to say, after that two hours walking on my bad foot, it was starting to play up a little bit. I don't know if it's getting better or not, my foot. I'm really not quite sure. Anyway, back down the doctors today, at uh, the hospital today, so that's why you know I'm, I'm rushing and trying to get everything in as much as possible. So that was my uh, uh, day yesterday. Oh, I also had a little visit to the doctor yesterday because he got a bit of an ear infection in my right ear. It's as itchy as hell. It actually feels like there's a, a loose hair inside it and it's moving around. It's okay at the moment, but sometimes it starts and I'm like poking me like this. You know, you know that little, what's that called? That, you know your ear, so you've got the outside of the ear. What's that little bit called on the inside? That sticks out. Does anyone know? Can someone look that up for me, please, and tell me? There's a bit... <laughs> There's a bit that sticks out on the inside of your ear there. And I'm not quite sure what that is. Please do let me know what that is. It's all very strange. Now, um... Sean... Says he can't see anything. Shania, can you see everything okay? Because I think it might be Sean. I have a feeling it's going to be Sean's problem and not ours. What do you reckon? I can just check that if you want for me, Sean. Would you like me to check it for you? One moment, please. Checking for you now. And that's working perfectly, Sean. I think it's your problem. No. Your problem, Sean. All okay with other people there we are computers don't always work properly do they so you can hear us but not see us that's terrible sean terrible 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 restart your machine if you have further difficulty all right so i went to the doctors um for me ear he had a little look in his poking that thing in his ear with a torch they're very clever they are aren't they you know you poke the thing in he says oh yes it does look a bit red in there Here's some eardrops. Well, he gave me a prescription for the eardrops. Which I then took straight to the chemist. Round the corner uh, from the doctors. Ah, John says he can see us. Good morning, John. Morning, John, in Croydon. How are those tra trams running today in Croydon? All right. Yes, yeah, Sean, it's your problem. No. 
Oh, uh, Sean, Sean seems to have a problem. Hmm. Just a minute, everyone... Oh dear, dear me, one minute. Poor little Sean is having a trouble, problem. Let's, let's try that again. There we are, Sean. You try that again, my friend. Where was I? Pardon? Oh, yes. So, went round the chemist, and guess what? I'm um, sorry, we don't have any eardrops in it. Well, oh, first of all, she said to me, oh, it'll be about an hour. And I'm like, oh. And she said, hang on, I'll go and ask for you. So she went up, went up to the uh, woman up, up who had, does all the prescriptions and all that. And uh, came back down. She says, oh, so, ever so sorry, we haven't got any any at the moment. Um, she said, um, I can order one. I said, well, well, I'll take it down to Boots. Because we've got a Boots in town as well. Um, so I took it into Boots. And guess what? They didn't have any either. So I've had to order some. And they will be here this afternoon by 12 o'clock. Which might sound good. The only thing is, I've got to go to hospital after this to have my feet done. And it's all a bit of a rush. Because when I finish the show, okay, when I finish the live show, then I have to put it back together for the recording. That involves about another half hour to 45 minutes work. So I'm really, really pushed for time today. But do not worry, I'm trying not to take it out on you. I'll try and give you as much of my time as possible. You are so much more important than a few silly old eardrops. You really are. So that was a bit of a failure there. You know, I can't believe that the chemist had run out of stuff. What if, it, what if I'd been, you know, a, 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 a serious ill people, Ill, Ill person with, 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 with uh, drugs, that if I didn't take them at a specific time, I would die. Then I would have died there and then outside Aldi's. I mean, can you imagine that? Die, because Aldi's is opposite the chemist, you see. I don't go in Aldi's, but it's opposite the chemist. Uh, can you imagine the embarrassment of dying outside an Audi. Can you imagine that? Wouldn't be so bad if it was a Waitrose, would it? That's why I do my shopping most of the time. Occasionally, I have to go up to Sainsbury's, but the people in there are just vile. Absolutely vile. Awful customers. Pushing their trolleys into each other. Rush, 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 rush. There is really a huge difference between the other supermarkets and Waitrose. And I'm afraid I have to include um, the other supermarkets, Marks and Spencers. That is in the category of the other supermarkets. It's the same as same as There is a completely different atmosphere inside Waitrose. Do you agree with me? Can you do me this experiment at some time in the next two weeks? I want you to. Go into Sainsbury's or Tesco's or Audi or um, Lidl or Asda or Marks and Spencer's food department. And then go into a Waitrose. And tell me if you notice the difference. Do that one by email. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Sean, I want you to do that. Sean, you must do that. OK, because you are like, you know, secret reporter. Sean, I want you to do those things. Go into a Waitrose and one of the other supermarkets and tell me if you notice a difference. And if there's no Waitrose where you are, then you'll have to get a bus. Or a little travel. Have a little travel. And you will notice how calm it is in there. People are not running around like blue arsed flies. They're really not. See what you think, Sean. And report back to me in two weeks' time. All right. Thank you. Good morning to Shania on the Isle of Wight. She's with us today, who says she can see and hear us. I'm pleased about that, Shania. Shania, are you a Barry Manilow fan? I think you are, aren't you? We've had this discussion. There is, incidentally, a little video of me singing one of the Manilow classics 
on my Facebook wall this week. I'm singing, I'm coming back so I can love you, which is highly appropriate and apt for today's show. It's on my Facebook wall. I think I sang it on Monday, so go down to Monday's posts. Not yet, when I finish this. Don't all disappear suddenly. Well, it's highly apt because I have some Barry Manilow news for you, boys and girls. Some good Barry Manilow news. From the Barry Manilow Facebook page. Are you ready for this? Barry is headed across the pond. That's right, Barry and his band are heading your way in May 2014. He's coming to the UK to see his UK fans. How fantastic is this news? So I'm already going to Florida to see him in January. And also, something else is happening in Florida. And I'm, I can't wait to tell you this. Can't wait to tell you this. But one thing at a time. Barry is coming to the UK in May. And he is playing... No less than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shows. Eight concerts. And let me tell you, every one of these will be full up. They will all be full up. You ready for this? Here is the schedule. Tuesday, May the 13th. London Wembley Arena. And he's there again on Wednesday, May the 14th. London Wembley Arena. Friday, May the 16th. Are you ready for this, Sean? Ipswich Town Football Club. Now, I've never been to... I, you know, I haven't seen many concerts. The only people I've ever seen in concert is Barry Manilow four times so far. And Wham! Back in the 80s. At the Hammersmith Odeon. They are the only people I've ever seen in concert. I have never been to a football club to see a concert. And I'm kind of wondering, how does that work? I mean, when you go and, and book tickets for a concert, I try and get the front row ones. I'm a member of the Barry Manilow fan club. As many thousands of others are. And you go on there... And generally, the tickets are available before they go on sale to the general public. Right? So we get first share. And you can generally get front row tickets. And they're quite expensive. You can either bid for them or pay a little bit more. Okay? I understand when you go to a theatre, whether it be the O2 or a proper theatre, when you book front row tickets, you kind of know that you're going to be in a front row in front of a stage, yeah? I can work that out. But when it comes to a football club, it, it switch Town Football Club, will they have front row tickets? How does that work? I'm not quite sure exactly how that works. And even if you did have a front row, would you be a long way away from the stage? Also, in a football club, Surely the sound can't be as good as it is in a theatre. If anyone knows the answer to any of those, please send us an email and let me know. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk So, the events go on. Sunday, May the 18th, Manchester phones for you, Arena. Monday, May the 19th, he's in Glasgow. Glasgow, the SSE Hydro Centre. Oh my God, he's not going swimming while singing, is he? Is he, is he going to come down one of those hydroelectric dams, walk across one of those and jump in the water and swim while he's singing, sing while he's swimming? That could be a whole new facet to our Barry. Incidentally, uh, we're still on the August picture behind Barry. We have our Barry Manilow calendar behind us. There he is in his white jacket. That picture will change for the next show. When it becomes September, a new picture for every month. Only four more pictures to see before it's Christmas. 
It's all disappearing very quickly. Thursday, May the 22nd, he's in Welsh Wales, in the valley. Barry Manilow in the valley. At the Cardiff Motor Point Arena. Saturday, May the 24th, at Southampton Aggies Bowl, Hampshire, CCC. What's CCC? Is that County Cricket Club? See, again, a cricket club. I mean, what is the sound like at something like that? I don't know. And his final concert in the UK on Monday, May the 26th, at London at the O2 Arena, where I've seen him twice. And again, you go to the O2 Arena and, you know, you buy your, you, you buy your front row ticket and you sit in the front row and you know where you're going to be. I, I just don't understand how it would be if if you um, went to a football match to see him. Sean says Ipswich Town Football Club had a massive pink concert and uh, it was packed. Right, yeah, but, but do you see what I mean? How, how, do the, how does the... Is it done in the round? Because a football stadium, everyone's sitting around the... the the field, aren't they? I, I just don't know how that works. Oh, I'm not sure, not sure how that works at all. If anyone knows, jot us down an email for the next show, please. And um, do tell us how that works, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk the website goes on to say, we're finalising the tickets and hope to be on sale via stars.biz in the next few days. Now, that's kind of where the fan club is, stars.biz. In the meantime, we know that as soon as we announce these dates, a lot of sites will offer tickets that they don't have. Be warned. We strongly encourage you to wait and get your tickets through the Barry Manilow International Fan Club. Have a little search for that on your internet, OK? The Barry Manilow International Fan Club, which is part of stars.biz. That's S-T-A-R-Z dot B-Z, OK? And then only through legitimate t t ticket agencies like um, Ticketmaster, I suppose, something like that you would go to. Stay tuned for on sale details right here. So there's the good news, boys and girls. Barry's coming back so he can love us the way he used to love us long ago. So next year, I could be seeing Barry three times because I should try and do two of the concerts in the UK, right? I want to take my niece to see Barry again, because she loved him. I also want to take my two aunts, because they're both very elderly. One will be 82 or 81. One will be 81 or 82, and the other one's in her late 70s. And I'm sure they would... I'm just going to buy the tickets and say, I've got these... You're coming with me. I'm not going to ask. That could be like a little Christmas present to them. So I'm looking forward to that, really looking forward to that. And, of course, I'm going to see him in Florida in January. That's on my own, that one. Um, but someone else is going to be coming to Florida with me. I'm very pleased to say that my nephew, Jimmy, 16, is going to come to Florida with me. And he's never been abroad. How fantastic is that? I'm so excited. And of course, the whole thing has now changed because I the only reason I was going was to see Barry, but then it was Florida. I know Disney's there and Universal and all those other bits and pieces are there. I was going to go to all those, which is all right on your own, you know. It's better with someone, whether it be your, your own age, something like that, you know. But to take a young person there, who has never, ever been there, never been on a long plane flight, never been to Disney, he's been to Euro Disney, but that was when he was a little boy, barely remembers much of that, to Disney, to Universal, 
to SeaWorld, to the NASA Kennedy Space Center, to take a young person there and give them that experience. And you would then see everything afresh through their eyes. And he wants to go. So I'm going to book it and I'm going to take him. I've got to read you. And I'm sure he wouldn't mind you um, knowing some of the conversation that was going backwards and forwards. Um, let's just find the beginning of that. But, but. There we are. Okay, so... <laughs> Where are we? So I sent him a message, how are you? And he usually replies with, I don't know you. Who are you? Why are you messaging me? That's how he used, just our little thing, you know, a little fun thing. Um, so I said, going to the USA in January, give me your orders for trainers and jeans. And he says, how comes you're going there again? Who is it? And I said, see Barry, and also Disney and Universal. Yes, the American Pigeons as well. I can't quite explain why I said American Pigeons. But his brother, Gary, has got this thing about pigeons. He likes pigeons. So now we all keep saying the word pigeon all the time. And I says, you can go if you want. We can go in the posh seats. I mean, in the aeroplane, you know, the nice, nice seats at the front. So he says, long flight, though, isn't it? And I said, yes, about eight hours. Jimmy says, that's a long time. What do you do for eight hours on a plane? So I said, watch telly, eat and drink. He says, you'll get fat. I said, I am. I said, these are the posh seats. <laughs> Can't have my nephew sleeping in the cheap, cheap, sitting in the cheap seats. So I then sent him a picture of several pictures of the plane. It'd be a Boeing uh, 777, British Airways one. And he says, they do look very nice. Here are the cheap seats. So I sent him a picture of those. And he says, oh, the ones in the middle of that page look very uncomfortable. And I said, yes, they are. Can you imagine sitting in those for eight hours? The posh ones go right down flat so you can sleep on them. He said, yes, they look very nice and comfy. Um, and it kind of went on a bit. And then let me just find the other little bit there. He says, bit scared but would love to go to America. And OK, they have already said it will be OK, because um, he's already asked his mum and dad. Right. So I said, tell me what you're scared of. And he said, just being so high, and it might sound silly, but bombers. Bless his little heart. He's terrified someone's going to blow up the plane. So I quickly typed into um, Google, British Airways bombs. And as far as I could see, no bomb has ever been set off on a British Airways plane. So I had a look at that. So I sent him that little article there. And then he said, what about turbulence? How bad can that be? I said, well, it's a little bit like going on over a really bumpy road. And I said, quite safe. Just a minute. So I looked up again and I found this article as written by a British Airways pilot who said turbulence is quite safe, even when it's really bad. It is quite safe to be in turbulence so i sent them all that and i think that's that's kind of made him a little bit happy i'll get him in his own room in the hotel and everything um although he's again he's a bit concerned that the room's going to be far away so i had to look on the site and you can tick things so you can have interconnecting rooms so you can have rooms next to each other hopefully being the january period it'll be a lot easier to get something like that and um i said I know it's a stupid question, but do you want to go and see Barry? Although I don't think there's any that you won't get, certainly won't get a seat next to me now because those ones will all have, all have gone. He said, no, it's OK. He said, but I'd like to go and see Justin Bieber. I mean, do me a favour. Justin Bieber. I mean, what's he going to do? Sit at the, stand at the front of the stage and start spitting at people. Did you see that article? How awful. Barry doesn't do that. Barry doesn't spit at people. Certainly not. 
No Justin Bieber or Bible, whatever his name is, is not going to appear there, I'm afraid. I'm so, so disappointed. I know you're going to be disappointed at that. <laughs> How can you want to go and see Justin Bieber in concert, please? So that's it. So that's happening. Um, and I'm, I'm just over the moon that he wants to come. And it's going to be fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I was a little bit concerned a couple of things once, really. Um, number one, how much is he going to miss my sister, his mum? You know, what do I do if, if we're doing something or, or maybe we're, um, you know, it's the end of the day and we're in our rooms and, and he starts crying. I mean, what do you do then? Just go and comfort him, I suppose. Uh, hugs and things. Um, I'm concerned that he, he will find... A stupid thing to say. He will find nothing that he likes to eat. Which is a really stupid thing to say. Because it's all stuff children like to eat there. And it's all pizzas and burgers and all that business. More concerned that I won't find any vegetarian places, to be honest, on that one. And... Um... Yeah... I was also concerned he would get bored, but that's impossible in Orlando, let me tell you that. A day out there is a full day out. You know, to go to Disney, you would leave your room at like 10 in the morning. You'll be lucky to get back there by 10, 11 o'clock at night. I mean, that, it really is a full day and it's like constant. So I've worked it out already. We'll have about four or five days for Disney, because there are four theme parks. Each theme park in all that, it's not like Dis Disney in Euro Disney. I mean, that really is like a side toilet compared to the Disney in Florida, right? Each theme, by the way, my voice is a little bit um, rough today. I know that the sound isn't coming out properly, is it? <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm straining here, straining, trying to get the sound out for you. Um, oh, nearly forgot something, just a minute. There, there we are. Um, so you want at least a day in each Disney park, and there are four of them. There's Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Great Universe... Uh, sorry, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, the, the movie one, where they do the movies, I can't think... Movie, the movie one, and Animal Park or Animal Kingdom, something like that. There's four of those. So I reckon four or five days doing the Disney ones... You want a couple of days doing the Universal ones, Great Universal, which is fantastic as well. There's SeaWorld, okay? There's NASA, that's nine days. He will love shopping. He's a bit of a fashion freak, Jimmy. So we'll say one, two, three days shopping. That's 12 days already. That's a really full schedule. And of course my Barry Manilow concert on the Saturday. So the Saturday, we'll probably do the shopping on the Saturday, on one of the Saturdays. It's a really full schedule if you go to Orlando. So he's not going to get bored, is he? I'm so excited that I can give someone, give a young person that experience. I just don't, hope he doesn't miss his mum too much. But then again, we've got Wi-Fi everywhere. We can do FaceTime on the old mobile phone. I got a new mobile phone. My one broke last week. I was going to tell you about that today, but um, I'm not going to have any time to uh, uh, to do that. Maybe on the next show or a future show. So much to get through. So that's my other good news. Take my nephew to Orlando. Fantastic. In January. OK, uh, the email address once again, boys and girls. It's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. OK, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. .co.uk Alrighty Email time Oh, we need to sing happy birthday It was Marge's birthday last week We didn't get a chance to sing So let me get my music ready To sing to Marge Are you ready Marge? It's a bit loud that one Happy birthday, Marge. Sorry I missed it last week. If you want me to sing you a birthday song, please just send us a little email, Win, 
and say, oh, it's my birthday on so-and-so. Can you please sing me happy birthday? And I'd be very pleased to do that. All right. Uh, who's this? Is it John? 3D Focus has sent us a Skype and he says, finally watching your live show rather than the recording. Secretly listening at work. We haven't seen Katie for a while. How is she? Katie sleeps a lot downstairs. OK, she, she doesn't walk around so much anymore. She's a bit of an old girl now, John. So she's she's fast asleep, curled up or a little pouffe in the living room, which has now got lots of little holes in it where she keeps sticking her nails in. But it doesn't matter. So she doesn't make many appearances. She's also stopped coming into my room at night to sleep in. But I think that's that's since it started getting warm. I think she prefers to be on her own when it's a little bit warm. But she is alive and well. I have a photo of Katie somewhere. Um, where would I have that? See if I can find a little photo. Katie Kins. Oh, no, I can't find one now, can I? Never find a photo when you want one, can you? Do we have one? Uh, what do I want? Just a minute. Album. Albums. Photos. Oh, there's me and my sister. It's quite a recent photo as well. If I, oh, there it is. Katie the cat. Let's just... Um, so I get that there. Uh, 622N. Okay, one minute. One minute and I shall... I shall do as you ask. Uh, there it is. Open. No, nope, not there. Not there. Oh, it's going to be there, isn't it? One minute. The latest, latest Katie Cat photograph. Katie! <laughs> Hang on. Katie Pick, where are we putting that then? For the recording at uh, 42, 47. Picture of me and Katie. And uh, she's sitting on my lap. She likes to be closer to the camera than me. OK, so do not worry. Katie is very well, John. All right. Worry not. Email time. Hello to Ross Patzelt, who says, while feeding Sophie, my six week old little girl at two o'clock this morning, I fire up one of your shows and watch you then. I prefer to watch you then, as there are no other noises in the house. So I'm being watched by someone at two o'clock in the morning. Is that wise? I mean, you know, if you're tired, it's likely to send you off to sleep again. You know that, don't you? Be warned, Ross. My show does send people to sleep. Ross says, On last week's show, I heard you discussing printer inks. And how much they cost. Well, it's outrageous. Oh, my ear's itching again now. Must get those eardrops. It's outrageous what they cost. I have a printer, but never use it. It has a scanner on it. I sometimes use that, but never the printer, as I detest paying the price for inks. I will, however, tell you how I print things out. So he doesn't use his own printer. I have a printer. I've got a black and white one and a colour printer. I've got two. I very, very rarely use... The colour printer. Extremely rare of me to use the colour printer. By the way, John, do you know the last time you sent me a message was April? Mr. 3D Focus. April was the last time you sent me a message. Unbelievable. And it where does the time go? Where does the time go? Ross says every Wednesday we go to the local library. It's free to join, and Emily likes to look at all the books. That's his other little girl. I think she must be about two now. In the library, there is now the facility to print out your own things. All you have to do is put whatever you want on a flash drive or jot down your email address details and print it out there and then. This service costs £10 at uh, 10 pence per A4 sheet, which is about 15 cents. It is excellent value, and I do it a lot. 
I'm not sure if you're a library person, but if not, why not spend an hour down the library one week and print things out there? Oh, Christ, I'd be there longer than an hour. I've got to print out all the emails and, and receipts and invoices and things. I couldn't do without my own printer. It's a nice way to relax, too, while flicking through their books. The library also hires out DVD films, games and CDs, and you can go on the internet. I'm surprised more people do not use the service. As you know, I watch you every week, and like the emailer said on last week's programme, your show is a simple but amazing piece of work. It is very simple. I'm a very simple person. I'm... <laughs> I'm a very, I am a simpleton. I'm a very simple person. I don't like things to be too complicated, Ross, as you well know. Thank you for saying that the show is amazing. It's very kind of you to say such things. And that's from Ross Patzelt from Norwich. Well, Norwich is near Ipswich, isn't it, Ross? Will you be going to see the Barry Manilow concert in Ipswich, at Ipswich Football Club? I'm assuming it's quite close to Norwich, is it? Suffolk, Norwich, are they close to each other? Must be, must be. All right, thank you, Ross. 3D Focus John says, Thanks, Chris. Got my Katie fix. Oh, yeah, she's all right. She's all right. She's very quiet now. Spends a lot of time curled up asleep, as I say. Uh, she talks a lot when she's hungry. Meow? 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 And she, she comes up. If I don't wake up at her breakfast time, she comes and wakes me up. That's absolutely true. Quite loud as well, she is, without meowing. I enjoyed your show recently about your trip to the Toby Carvery, John says. Um, I think you should eat even if you're not hungry, especially if people are in front of you. <laughs> I've tried to send you lots of emails, but I've always had bounce backs for some reason. We'll try again soon. I wonder where you're sending them to. Well, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is my email address, John. Okay. I'll give you a, I'll give you another one actually. Yeah. There's a, another couple of emails for you there, John. Try one of those. Send us uh, one on each one and I'll let you know if it comes here. Then you can use that one to send in uh, emails. Okay? Hello to James. Hello James. Always good to hear from you, sir. Who says, hi, Chris, you go on about bureaucracy. My local council is going to vote against conservative policy on public council meetings, but they are quite happy to film you in the streets via closed circuit television. Also, my local council has already been in trouble with uh, a CCTV system on privacy. So it amazes me that the council don't like their own privacy invaded. What they, do, they don't want cameras up there, though, do they? In the council chambers. Oh, no. Because we'll all know what goes on and then we won't like it. Shocking. But don't mind doing it on us. Yet yeah, th yeah, They've got these cameras up everywhere watching what's going on, haven't they? All the time. I hope the council loses the battle on this one, as I think it's wrong what's going on. Hope Katie is OK from James. Thank you, James. See, lots of people, lots of people worry about my cat, Katie. She's very well. Very well indeed. Hello to Marge, who says, Can I have a belated birthday with music for my birthday on the next show? I should have asked for it last time, but I forgot. That's if you're in the mood to do it. What do you mean if I'm in the mood to do it? Of course I am. You ask and I give, that's it. If you ask, uh, yeah, that's it. Not much going on here in Oklahoma. Having my van repaired, that's about it. They're replacing the rack and pin and steering. And brake hoses to start, uh, but soon to have many more repairs. It's like an old van, but still run, re runs great and doesn't use oil. Oh, I like old vehicles. I like the way they rattle as they go along, you know, that, that sort of rattling noise. I had a couple of old cars. Not, not classic cars, just old cars. They used to rattle as they went along. If I had the money, I would paint it like a hippie van. I love the old Volkswagen uh, vans the hippies drove in the 70s, 60s and 70s. Yes, they're good, they are. With the flat fronts and the roof that come up. What are they called? Camber vans. Volkswagen camber vans. We like those. 
We actually had a van full of hippies park in our family's front yard once, when I was about seven years old living in a Texas home. They were not the dirty kind at all, very clean and well-dressed, and actually from the UK. They were passing through when their van broke down and my dad, being a mechanic, was working on it. They put up a tent in our yard and camped out. Their van, their van as I stated, was multicoloured, and I loved the way they talked and dressed for the bell-bottom pants, the braided long hairs and beads. I think it was my first time hearing the English accent and from then on started loving accents from foreign countries. Back then, there was no need to lock your doors or worry like today as much. Not as much violence. We did have a chow dog in behind our fence that would cut his hair to look, and we would cut his hair to look like a lion. <laughs> People swore we did have a lion behind the six-foot fence. Oh, wouldn't you love a lion? I'd love a lion or a tiger. I really would. Now, can you imagine a tiger jumping up on your lap and wanting to be stroked and cuddled? I'd quite like that. But I think they'd been inclined to bite your head off. That's the only thing, isn't it? Oh, well. The hippies left the next day since my, fa my dad had finally gotten the part they needed and it was repaired. My other favourite vehicle from that time is the Volkswagen Beetle. Now, I didn't, I never liked those for some reason. I wanted the one in yellow. I always loved the weird stuff like lava lamps, yes, beads, etc. Or what others called weird anyways. I suppose that's why I practice my craft today. I love odd things in nature. That's probably why you like this show, Marge. You like odd things, so you like me. Is that what it is? I reckon. I'm painting my living room walls a royal plum colour. And they're looking very nice and warm. The white walls, no matter how much I wash them, look dirty. Do you like anything wild or crazy, according to society, as in colours or such? <clears throat> yes, I like bright green. I like a really bright green colour. Let me see if I've got anything in here that is good. No, there isn't anything in here that's bright green. I've got anything that's really bright green. And like I, I like I like bold colours. My hallway is painted like a deep blue colour, very bold colour. So I like I do like bold colours. Yes. You do seem to dress very casual, and uh, I wear the t-shirts similar to what you buy here. And you wear the t-shirts that you buy here at Walmart, just four dollars each. Since I'm a housekeeper, they are cheap and easy to wear and wash. I buy either blue or black. Yes, I shall be going to Walmart when I'm in the states and purchasing some t-shirts. I think there is a there's a big I believe there's a big Walmart in Florida which I shall seek out. I shall be hiring a car there as well, which is a bit worrying, really. Hiring a car. Okay. Did we have someone try and call in? Oh, there we are. Just a second, we've got someone on the phone. Good morning. Oh, it's the old music again. We haven't got time to listen to music, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. I'd love to listen to music, but there just isn't time. Not with all these things happening here, okay? Um... Yeah, I'll be hiring a car in Florida as well and driving my little nephew around. Going to visit the sites and, and shopping. Must do shopping. You cut your hair again. I notice extremely short. I must admit, you look better leaving a bit longer, even though I know you're trying to hide your bald spot. <laughs> it's true. It's true, Marge. I'm trying to hide the bald... I'm not having hair transplant surgery. People look strange when they have that. There was this woman on the telly the other night and she'd obviously had, it was it was on that programme, that excellent programme on Channel 4 called Four Rooms. Anyone seen that? And there was this woman on there and she was trying to sell something and she'd obviously had a lot of facial surgery. She did not look awful. You know, lips like, great big lips. <laughs> Why do they do it? Why do they do it? She said... Uh, trying to hide your bald spot. The hair on the front is nicer for my taste if you leave it just a bit longer. But it is, of course, your hair. Oh, if I leave it longer, you see, I mean, it's, it's already showing through now. You know, I only had it cut two weeks ago. It has to be cut, like, every two weeks now with one of those shaver things. Bzz. Someone said I should get one myself and do it myself, but I, well, I don't like the idea. I don't think I'd be very good at doing that. 
taking a bit of a break from Facebook at the moment. Oh, sorry. Um, have I missed anything? No. Taking a bit of a break uh, of Facebook. Been kind of dead on there lately. But I do check occasionally. Only, uh, to, to, only on your page to see what's going on. I see you have something coming up soon in London, but not sure what it is. I'm sure you'll tell everyone when the time comes. Yes, I will. I was hoping... Let me just... Let me just sort myself out. I'm going to need to, need to move around a bit. I was hoping to tell you all today what this new thing in London was going to be. But uh, it's, it's not going to happen uh, quite yet. I can't say anything yet until I'm given the all go sort of thing. All right. So hopefully maybe oh, it'd be two weeks now, wouldn't it? I'll probably put it on Facebook first. If you want to join me as a friend on Facebook, I'm on there as well. Uh, my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. All right. So it's facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Well, enough uh, of me rambling. If my life were more exciting like yours, I would have more to say. But maybe between MP3 free files I send from time to time or bringing up past adventures in my life, I can at least participate in your show as you go along. Still your friend and fan would still love a belated birthday song and music. Though. Well, I've had you've had it, dear. I've done it now. You don't want it twice, do you? God's sake. <laughs> Thank you, Marge. Yes, past life, present life, we don't mind what it is. We like to know about other people, what they've been up to. Tell us all about your lives. Send in your emails, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. 3D Focus John says, I'm going bald, so I use a spray called Fullmore. It's like a spray on hair. It works, but the problem is it gets everywhere. When it rains, it can drip down my face. Oh, John. No, I, I can't see myself using that, John. It's... it's. <laughs> oh, dear. No, we can't... We can't be... um. We can't be having stuff dripping down our face while we're... While, while it's raining or we're in a steamy hot place. Hello to Albin in Slovakia. It says, hi, Chris. My source of real English language. He watches a show because it teaches him real English language. Language. This is how the real English speak. It's not BBC English. BBC English is very good. Don't get me wrong. If you want to learn to talk very properly, listen to the BBC. I speak as the people on the street do. I hope you're well today. Yes, apart from the sore throat, the bad ear... The bad feet, it's all going terribly wrong here, you know. Terribly, terribly wrong. I have a story from my local pub, which is called a wooden owl house. Now, I've never heard that expression before. Wooden owl house. What exactly does that mean? Wooden owl house. Don't know. You know, this pub is for average people, not an any fancy posh ones. I love to go there sometimes. You can hear a lot of stories and jokes that happen to people like me or you. I guess many of them are made up, but who knows? Yesterday I was there, and it was a nightmare. Probably this has happened to you, that you drank so much, and even in the morning you were smashed. No, that doesn't happen to me, actually. I don't drink. Don't drink. Many, many, many years ago, when I was 21, I did go for a little phase of getting drunk every night and crawling back home. But no, I, I don't drink. I haven't drunk for about 20 years. I may have had the odd glass of champagne if I've been out at, at do or something like that. Maybe one glass. One glass of champagne and I'm away. I'm away with the fairies. I really am. Ah! Oh, one glass of champagne is all it takes me to get drunk. It was like I woke up in the morning, I got up. I went to the bathroom and there was a mirror was looking at me, a perfect stranger. Never mind, I said to him, I don't know who you are, but I'm going to brush your teeth. <laughs> Let's go to a story I remember from that night. A little sick joke. A guy sat in front of a hospital operating room. A doctor came out of the surgery after a difficult five-hour operation and said you know the operation was successful but your wife fell into a coma it means for you lots of troubles you'll have to turn her over because of source pressures change her diapers give her infusions and drugs 
The guy is thinking, damn, I'm in the prime of my life and now I'm in such a terrible situation to look after her. The doctor after a while said, oh, it's okay, I was only kidding, she's died. <sighs> That's a terrible, terrible joke. And something I cannot read out on this show for fear it might offend people. But it is the sort of thing I laugh at, I'm afraid. I do have one of those senses of humour. Thank you, Alban. <laughs> you naughty man. He says, sorry if there's any mistakes in English. You know I'm only a human being. Oh, we don't worry about English mistakes. It's not a spelling test. Albert is also with us live and he's just heard me read out his emails. And he tells me, uh, wooden owl house is made of wood, like in the 18th century. So I didn't know that. That's what it is. All right. Thank you, Albert. <clears throat> nice to hear from you. Uh, let's see. I wanted to actually ask you something. As you know, this Friday, uh, this show <clears throat> is live on Friday mornings at 10.30 UK time. We can do the show at a different time if you want. I could do, and I, I was thinking about this earlier, I could do Saturdays at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Would that be any good to anyone? Saturdays at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, UK time. Or, and what was the other one? I could do the show on Monday mornings at some time between 10.30 in the morning and one o'clock in the afternoon. Perhaps one o'clock in the afternoon. I could do the show on Monday afternoons at one o'clock in the afternoon. So I'd like your thoughts on that, please. If you could send an email in with that on it. Would the show be better as it is now at 10.30 on a Friday morning? Okay. At 12 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon? Or at one o'clock on a Monday afternoon. Please let me know where you would prefer the timing of this show to be. I can't do it, I'm afraid, at night. I'm very fortunate that I work every night. The only way to do it at night would be like... <laughs> the, the only possible time of doing it at night would be one o'clock on a Tuesday morning. And I'm assuming... That wouldn't be any good for anyone. But I'll, I'll, I'll throw that into the equation as well. So, would you like the show, in future, to continue at 10.30 on Friday mornings, 12 o'clock on Saturday afternoons, 1 o'clock on Monday afternoons, or 1 o'clock on Tuesday morning, which is very, very late. I would appreciate... If you could answer that for me. Okay? Because we might have a little bit of a swap around. It might be better for you to be at those times. Send that, um, please, in by email. I'll put it on my Facebook wall as well at some point. So I, I, and I'll go with the majority, okay? Which will, which will upset someone. That Guaranteed that, that someone won't be happy with that. But I'll go with the majority. And we'll see, see what happens with that, all right? Um, I want to say thank you to Anita who's a big Barry Manilow fan and says hello Chris I know this is short notice but my group for September the 10th meet and greet with Barry, Bruce and Tony Barry Manilow have two tickets that have become available wondering if you'd be interested in attending please let me know if this is possible and that's from my friend Anita in Atlanta. It's funny, you know. Becoming a member of the fan club, Barry Manilow fan club, and talking about Barry, I've met lots of new friends, all women around my age, and 
it, it's just fantastic because we talk. We just talk. Uh, the re the way I met these people was I uploaded a load of photographs from my visit to Barry Manilow. Uh, my visits to Barry Manilow concert. So I upload the photographs. And I think it was early this year that I actually put the photographs on the Barry Manilow page. And from that, people saw them and then sent me messages and said, oh, thanks for putting the photographs out. Some of them clicked the ad friend thing and I replied to them. It's very kind of, you know, people to, to, to thank you for doing something. So I uploaded all the photographs onto, onto the Barry Manilow site and I've made all these friends and it's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And then for Anita to send me something like that, because I told you I did try and get the platinum ticket for um, Florida, but unfortunately I didn't get one, which, which is just one of those things, you know. You would have been very lucky to get one anyway. I don't think there's going to be any for the UK, which is a shame, but, you know, one of those things. I still get to see him. And then for Anita to send me that, it's very kind, Anita. You're quite right. It, it is too close for me to come. And I'll be in Rome at that time anyway, so I can't. But thank you, Anita, very, very much for that offer. I really, really appreciate that. Um, finally today... Oh, you remember the dentist? The private dentist that that kept ringing up until I told them that I'd changed... This was someone else now, and the person whose number it was, they're now starting sending letters. Two, this is nearly two years ago I last went to see them. They're now sending letters. Dear Mr. Eden, as part of our high level of service, I checked my pay And so it goes on. Please make an appointment. They don't bloody give up. I'm with an NHS one now, which cost me so much less than that money. Thank you very much. We won't be doing that. All right? Oh, 3D Focus already writes. I'd like Saturdays I can watch more often. Um, but would always watch the recording. OK, so that's one one point for Saturday. I'll, I'll keep a little tally on there, OK? I think I can do like a quiz thing, a question thing on Facebook. I'll, I'll try and work out how to do that. Finally today, a little bit here from lovely Wendy, who I spoke to on the phone last night. Wendy's another fan of who said, just watching your show from last Friday, the other catalogue, because we were talking about the Clean Easy thing, Clean Easy and Betterware. Um, I couldn't remember the Clean Easy. She said, the other catalogue that comes through your door is Clean Easy, or Clean Ease. Um, I worked for fi Clean Ease for five years, and I loved it. And I've, I told her I had a sign on my door saying, no callers, no this, no that. And I said, well, they seem to ignore that. They still put the, 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 the magazines through. And Wendy says, the reason they ignore the sign on your door is because they are told to. The number of people who used to have signs on their door but used to go, uh, but used to buy us from us, you'd be surprised. And that is why they are told to ignore them. So they buy the signs from Clean Easy, the people put the signs on there, and then ignore them. <laughs> you'd be surprised. <clears throat> Some people used to get irate and shout and scream and just throw the books back at us. Oh, I used to love those people. She says, I used to stand there and grin and wound them up even more. No, I wouldn't stand there and throw them back. I certainly wouldn't do that. I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm not usually in when they deliver them. They just post them through the box. She said, I really enjoyed working for Clean Easy on the whole. I absolutely loved doing it. So much that I ended up doing it full time and earned £2,000 a month. It's not bad, is it? But it's flipping hard work out in all weathers. And to make it a good business, you have to be out in those weathers. It isn't a job for wimps. It never ceases to amaze me how many people moan about those catalogue sellers. But those people also moan if the people were sat on their backside claiming benefits. You've got a point there, Wendy. You've absolutely got a point there. Thank you for that. That's all the emails done. Um, I've got a couple of stories here and uh, I'm going to save those. Uh, Wendy, once again, kindly alerted me to how a man is turning cold calls into cash. So I'm going to keep that story there. There's the broken phone story, which I need to tell you about um, in, a, in a future show. Uh, but that's it. And I won't see you for a couple of weeks now, because don't forget, next Friday I'm away in uh, Rome with my friend. I'm sure I'll have many stories to tell you from there when I get back. OK, time to disappear then. Uh, don't forget, send your emails in. Chris at United Kingdom Talk. 
www.unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, Chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk. Been an absolute pleasure being with you this Friday. I shall see you again in two weeks' time. Don't forget also join us on Facebook. Facebook username Chris Reardon UK. Chris Reardon UK. Thanks so much for listening. Have a lovely weekend. Bye bye now.